Baseball on MLB The Show. It's the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Boston Red Sox. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. All right, first pitch coming up and towing the slab here, Nick Pavetta. Chris, what should we keep an eye on here with him? Anytime you have five pitches to work with on the mound, that repertoire can be a real weapon in terms of keeping hitters off balance, man. It's, it's one of those things that I'm going to be looking for in this one. Does he have a feel for all of those pitches, or is he just able to get one or two over in the strike zone where he wants? Now, it's tough to do to be able to command all those pitches, but if he can, he is going to be very tough for the opponent today. And he deals. Strike one. Fouled off. He was late. And another ball. Swing and a ball lifted left field. He's there. He's got it. And there's one down. Time to take a look at the Diamondbacks lineup. And the key to victory for them here, get their starters some run support early. Boog, if they can get him that run support early, it's likely the other team folds because they know how dominant he can be once he gets settled in. So put pressure on that other team right away. Jump out to a lead early and a few runs is going to feel like 30. Cattell Marte in the box with one away as he takes ball one. Not giving him a pitch to hit there isn't a bad thing. He's dealing with a great first pitch hitter up there. One down, base is empty. Nasty backdoor slider. There's really nothing you can do with that if you swing at it. So that's a good take by him. There's the strike. On the ground to third. And that should be extra bases. And that rolls into the corner. Throws to second. Not in time. It's a double. Man, those are the types of hits where you don't feel any vibration in your hands whatsoever. Such a good feeling. Really good swing right there. He got a pitch that he knew he could handle. Allowed himself to stay back just a tad bit longer. And he hit the ball on the screws. And now it's Christian Walker. Fastball for a strike. One out, the runner at second, and we're just getting started here in the top of the first. One, one. Squirts away a little bit. Well done behind the dish. And there's a ball. And another ball. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. I'm not sure that was the exact location the pitcher wanted, but it worked. He got the swing and miss, and I'm sure a bit of sigh of relief after seeing that one go through the zone. Here's Jack Peterson. That's in there. Strike one. Two outs. And that's down it away. Marte at second with two down.
Next pitch is downstairs. It's a good take. Next pitch is outside. Gabriel Moreno in the on deck circle. On the ground right side. Over to first. And that is the inning. One left for the Diamondbacks. And now the Red Sox get their turn. No score. You're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show. Back here at Fenway Park. And today on the hill, Zach Gallen. Ooh, he's a guy that takes great care of himself because he wants to finish every game he starts. I think for any lineup that faces him, you've got to try to have lengthy at-bats and run up that pitch count. Anything to help get him out of the game early. Bottom of the first. And now, Jaron Duran. Chris, his skill set straight out of the mid-80s. Good contact, not much power, and he could run. He always uses the wheels to his advantage. His biggest challenge in this day and age is to not get caught up in trying to hit home runs because so many people are. And a foul ball. He just has to understand that his skill set is unique and he's very valuable for any ball club. If he does that, he'll play a long time in this league. And that skips into dirt. He swings and hits a fly ball. Center field. Carroll makes the grab on the run. Here's a check of the Red Sox lineup put together by manager Alex Cora. They're dealing with a top-level arm on the mound, so this figures to be a tough matchup for them. What's the key to the offense today, Singy? Oh, Boog, I think when you got a guy that's this talented on the mound, you've got to find ways to disrupt his rhythm, make him uncomfortable a little bit. The guys that can handle the bat and perhaps, you know, bunt, bunt for a base hit, get him moving off the mound. If you're in the box and he seems to be just in a flow, step out, mess up his timing, somehow try to get in his head a little bit, and then when he does come in the zone, you may only get one pitch. You better not miss it. Next offering is in for a strike. And Singy, as a team, you need to make the most of the very few opportunities he's going to give you, right? Absolutely. And, and you know if you don't get to guys like this a lot of times early, once they really settle in, it's going to be the later innings that they hand that ball over to a reliever if they do at all. Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. Two outs, base is empty. Now batting Tristan Casas. On the inside corner for a strike. Two outs, base is empty. He goes down looking. Red Sox go down quietly. We played an inning. No score. Top of the second. Now the D-backs catcher, Gabriel Moreno. This guy, one of the best defensive catchers going. You talk about framing, the ability to block, catch, and throw. He is at the top of the game. That one's in there. Strike one. Really good athlete. And many times we talk about, you know, the feet of infielders. This catcher as well, really quick feet. He's able to recognize the pitch, see the trajectory, and get into a spot where he can block those balls and keep them from going to the backstop. Hey, Eugenio Suarez up to the plate now. Really impressive with the way he frames, the way that he sets it up, because sometimes those pitches are off the plate, but because he sets up and presents it so well, he still strikes for his pitcher. Devers calls it in, and there's two away. That was a good pitch to hit right down the heart of the plate. Had pretty good timing on it, just got underneath it a little bit and popped it up. Alec Thomas now.
Fastball for a strike. Thomas, 23 years old, and he was a second round pick back in 2018. That's in there, and it's 0 2. This guy's not wasting any pitches. Hitters got to get into swing mode. This is a good time to expand the zone, throw something maybe down in the dirt. Gets a piece, and it stays 0 2. Two down, nobody on. And one and two. No score here in the second. Outside low, and the count is two and two. Two outs. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. Really great change of speeds. He goes off the off speed to the fastball, and the hitter doesn't know what's coming next. Popped up, drifts towards it, and he makes the catch. And that'll do it. Nothing doing for Arizona. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. We head to the bottom of the second. Now it's the DH. Masataka Yoshida. Obviously a guy who makes good contact. Hits for average. But one of the things in today's game. The value in the fact that he hits both righties and lefties. Gallant back to work strike one they're so reliant on the matchups nowadays Chris and it's huge when you don't have to sit a guy or platoon him when you can hit you know both sides in terms of pitchers arms you're a guy that it's hard to take out of the lineup and I think it's very important today when everything is under the microscope the wind of the pitch swing and a miss had him out front for the strikeout he's really good hitting the baseball the other way so credit the pitcher for having him out in front of that pitch clearly he had him fooled here's Trevor story line drive Carroll racing over to make the catch man he smoked that fastball he's all over it it's just frustrating when you can't get it to fall maybe next time off he'll find a hole will your Abreu up next for the Red Sox that one's in there 0 and one this lineup's going to have to find a way to make him work a little harder out there on the mound. I mean, he is just mowing him down. He's settling in. you got to make him uncomfortable. Maybe step out of the box, call timeout, do whatever it takes. And a big swing and a miss. Gets a piece and stays alive. to the right side throws the first and it's a one two three inning nothing doing for Boston we'll move to the third with no score and we're back all set for the start of the inning here's Lourdes Gurriel Jr. The right hander back to work. Fastball for a strike. Well, we call that keyholing. Even though it's right there and looks pretty good, if he doesn't love it, he's not going to swing that early in the count. Guriel gets a piece. On the ground. Whips it to Casas. Leadoff man retired here in the third. Here's the shortstop at the play. Geraldo Perdomo. Outfield playing pretty shallow. He swings and misses at the first pitch. 0 and 1.
One out, base is empty. The shortstop takes the ball. That one is blasted. Left field towards the monster. And it's off the green monster. He's in at second with a one-out double. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. Just missed out on a home run right there, but he certainly hit it hard enough. Just didn't have the right launch angle to carry it over the wall, but still an excellent swing of the bat. Runner in scoring position now and a good opportunity to push across the first run of the ball game. Back to the top of the lineup. Here's the center fielder, Corbin Carroll. Pitch misses, and it's 1-0. Corbin Carroll was an easy choice for Rookie of the Year in 2023. Voters made him the unanimous choice after he put together a consistent season that took a lot of drama away from the announcement. The world of baseball knew he was going to win it. Pitch is in there, and the count is one and one. And Boo, Carroll deserved the award, no doubt about that. At 22 years old, he had 54 steals and led the league with 10 triples. In there safely. And a 2-1 on the way. Line drive, caught! He put a really good swing on that pitch and hit the ball hard. You know, line drives won't always find a hole, but the more you can hit the ball like that with good exit velo, the better off you're going to be in the long run. An outstanding hitter in Cattell Marte. Doubled in his first A.B. That's a slider for a strike. ripped base hit and they strike first as they take a one nothing lead wasting no time he's two for two now on the night and just a triple and home run away from the cycle seriously we're starting with this already runner at first with two away Christian Walker stands in now for the Diamondbacks Pavetta checks over to first and he's back late on that fastball one run across in the frame so far we're here in the top half of inning number three line drive hauls it in to end the inning but the RBI single pushes across a run it's now a one nothing ball game Major League Baseball is on the show Set for the bottom of the third and stepping in for Boston, Tyler O'Neill. Here comes a pitch. One of the things amazing with Zach, think about the players he's been traded with and for. In December of 17, he and Sandy Alcantara were dealt to Miami from the Cardinals for Marcel Ozuna. Then ultimately in July of 19, he went to Arizona for Jazz Chisholm. Chases the changeup in the dirt. And a swing and a miss. Down on strikes. And now one away. Really love the pitch sequence right there. I'm telling you what. Pitcher and catcher on the same page right now. So stepping in for Boston. Vaughn Grissom. That one misses, and that's ball one. That clips the corner. Man, that pitch was dotted. So much talent on display when this guy's out there on the hill. Missed with a changeup. Ball two. One down, base is empty. And downstairs. Just doesn't seem to want to throw him a fastball. 
on the corner for a strike and the counts full the pitch fouled off again and it remains three and two home team down a run here in the last half of the third and that one is lifted in the air Carroll moves towards it he's got it and there are two outs here's the catcher Connor Wong it's interesting he plays kind of a, a power spot defensively but runs pretty well so when you're looking at that position you're not expecting someone that has maybe above average speed but he does in there at the knees and it's one and one and I think that skill set really upgrades the position because when you have that kind of speed it makes the whole team that much better on the ground right side Marte throws the first in time out number three one two three go the Red Sox they trail here one nothing and we're back here at Fenway Park and Jack Peterson stands in and here it comes what about him playing another position on defense, one that would require a little more range? Absolutely, and I think if push came to shove where they had to make a, a move during a game, it surprised a lot of people. You might even be able to put him in center field. Swing and a miss as he was out front that time. Next offering upstairs. The wind and the pitch. That misses. Ball three. You know, these D-backs showing great discipline at the plate, and patience definitely seems to be the name of their game in this one. He's only given up one run, but the starter's pitch count is starting to get up there, and that might be the best news yet for this offense. They all pitch. Battling here as he fouls it away. You know, sometimes all it takes is getting to the next arm before an offense does any damage, and that might be the case today. Got him. And that's the first out. Got away with that curveball, no doubt about it. It passed right through the heart of the strike zone, and he just couldn't get the bat on it. When you strike out on one like that, that's when you start having conversations with yourself, and they're not usually very friendly. Now the catcher up to hit. Gabriel Moreno. Fought off foul. Bases empty one away. Top half of inning number four. Way inside, gets out of the way. Straighten him up a little bit. Dives and he can't hang on. He decides to eat it and they come away without an out. Hey, Eugenio Suarez up to hit now. He's 0 for 1. And that one fouled off. Man at first, one away. This one in the dirt, nothing doing. Count moves to one and one. And a one one. Fly ball down the line. This has got a chance, and it is foul. Well, pitcher's probably thinking he's a little late on that pitch, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed him up, not give him something off speed that he can handle. The punch out there, and there's two away. Well, you rarely ever see three curveballs in a row because that's one of those pitches that's most effective when you haven't seen it recently. You might see three sliders in a row, but right there, he was feeling that curveball and figured he could finish with that pitch. 
Now the batter now Alec Thomas 0 for 1 so far. And that's in for a strike. And a swing and a miss. More and more guys are looking to slog regardless of the count. In this situation, we'll keep a close eye on his approach. 0-2 now. Fights it off, you'll see another. Two outs. High fly ball out to center field. And makes the play, and that's out number three. One left for Arizona, but they're on top, one nothing. Back inside Fenway Park, now batting Jaron Duran. Feels like it's less common today that you see a guy like this. The speed component, the contact component, but lack of power. Right through there for a strike. I think baseball's starting to understand that those guys are valuable like they once were. They need them in this game today. Clips the outside corner, and it's nothing in two. Outside. 0 2 fastball way out of the zone. I think he's trying to speed him off. Got to stay back. Off speed's probably coming. Got him swinging. No, oh, there's a small sigh of relief right there. I mean, just to keep that speed off the base pass, it's not just the pitcher, it's other guys that have to think about it from your infielders have to think about that runner potentially stealing but also be in position to make a play as an outfielder you're thinking about a base hit to the outfield I got to get to it quickly to try to keep this guy from taking an extra base so I think everyone just a little more relaxed that he didn't reach base here's Rafael Devers that one's in there and that's strike one yeah and here's a fun stat on Devers he's at his best when he's hitting homers and doubles and by the time he was 26 years old Devers already had over 150 home runs and more than 200 doubles. He's just the 15th player in baseball history with those kinds of numbers at that age. Goes down looking for the strikeout. He's got to be frustrated with that call. No, oh, you know that's got to be very frustrating for this guy. He knows the strike zone extremely well. And you know what? Good hitters are not going to compromise. He'll take that punch out, but ultimately stick with his plan and have more success than anything else. And now it's going to be Tristan Casas. And that's off the inside edge. And that's ball one. Two down, nobody on. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. Next offering is in for a strike. Ripped to third, but handled, and that'll end the inning. Red Sox go down one, two, three. They're down one, nothing. Back here at Fenway, top five, John Shabby with Chris Singleton. And leading it off, Lourdes Goriel Jr. Pavetta back to work. That one misses. Ball one. Boston's bullpen with some activity. Greg Weiser preparing to come on if needed. Jakes warming up as well. And the 1 0. And misses inside. And that is in for a strike. And a count two and one. Good eye right there. A rare three ball count here. He's been throwing strikes all day. Got to be ready to hit if you're in the box.
Pitch is in for a strike. And now it's three and two. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. Wow, just great bite to that slider. Broke hard out of the zone, and he just couldn't hold up the swing. You know, as a hitter, that pitch is really hard to take, and there's just not much you can do with it. You know that, but you don't want to get rung up by the umpire. Next to hit for Arizona, Geraldo Perdomo. And that's in there for strike one. Perdomo, an all-star a season ago, 24 years old, and he was born in the Dominican Republic. Base is empty one away, and we're at the top of the fifth. Late with the swing there. And down on strikes he goes. And two away now. Well, not much you can argue with there as a hitter. That pitch was dotted on the inside corner of the plate. I think even if he swings the bat, it blows him off and not really able to do anything with it anyhow. I think if you see that early, then perhaps you can pull those hands a little bit tighter and get the fat part of the bat to it. But I'd say overall, you just have to tip the cap on that one. Great execution. That's a base hit. And that keeps the inning alive. Now, no waiting around right there. He was ready to swing it on the first pitch. He actually kind of fooled him with the breaking ball on the inside part of the plate there. Didn't get a good piece of it, but he got just enough to fight it off and make it work out. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. Marte stands in here, takes ball one low. Carroll off of first with two away. And that one wrapped foul. Move to first. Carroll back on a dive. Righty delivers. There's the strike up high. Now one and two. What a stop to his knee, the throw, and very nicely done for the out. That was a great job of doing the math. He had the perfect angle, diving stop, completes the play, and that ends the inning. Back here in Boston, we head to the bottom of the fifth. Here's the Boston cleanup hitter, Masataka Yoshida. The line to kick the pitch. Ball one, no strikes. Right through there for a strike. The one one. Sliced hard, but foul. Right hander kicks deals. Ripped on the ground a second. And the leadoff hitter retired in the fifth. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Let's the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. Trevor Story comes up to the plate. He's 0 for 1. You talk about elite defensive players, especially in the middle of the diamond. And this guy is at the top of the list. That's in there. And it's 0 and 1. And you played behind guys, and they love having your speed out there defensively. One of the things that we talk about is how much pitchers enjoy having those elite defenders behind them. Swing and a miss as he was late that time. Hoog, and the one thing about that is speed never goes in a slump, and defense shouldn't either. Now this one is hammered way back there its way and gone and we are tied a gigantic blast it's 1-1 that one just sounded different and might have been the loudest moment yet man my ears are ringing I can feel that swing from the booth
With a low 90s fastball, you have to live on the edges and hit your spots. If you don't, you'll get hit hard. Really good swing there. Patient, waited for it. It was like BP all over again. So one out, nobody on. And next for the Red Sox, Willier Abreu. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. One out, base is empty, and a run in. Last half of inning number five. Next pitch inside. Going to count one and two. Short hop liner handled it short. Throws to first in time. Here's Tyler O'Neill. Pop foul out of play off to the right. Kicks and fires. He swings and fouls one off. Two down, nobody on. Line drive, and that's a base hit. So, a man aboard, Vaughn Grissom now at the plate. 0 for 1 with a fly out to center. of the zone for a strike. It's 0-1. Gallon checks on the runner. O'Neal back in on a dive. Two outs. And a foul ball. The pitch. Outside low, and the count is one and two. Well, that's kind of what you expect in an 0-2 count. Excellent job of the hitter to have the plate discipline to lay off of that pitch. Got him. Picks up strikeout number seven. So they pick up a run on two hits, no errors, and a man left. Five innings complete. All tied, 1-1. We're back and they make a change to start the sixth. The new pitcher, Zach Kelly. Number 76. Zach Kelly. So digging in, Christian Walker. The first baseman, Christian Walker. And the pitch. And ball one. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Greg Weiser getting loose out there. And another ball. Just missed. So definitely a little wild right out of the gate. Well, it can be a little tough coming from the bullpen mound to this mound, but you've got to find a way to get ahead in the count quickly. He hasn't. We'll see how this at bat turns out. Late on that fastball. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. 
Well, that's the money maker right there. Two strikes, slider down and away from a same side thrower as the hitter. I mean, that's just tough. You're looking to protect with two strikes and very difficult to lay off. And now Jack Peterson. That one finds the zone. Strike one. One down, base is empty. Got him. Two out. Chance to strike out the side now. You talk about the benefits, the advantages of relievers who can come in and get the swing and miss, whether it's inherited runners or maybe a little jam that they get into themselves. Knowing that they can miss the bat, tell you what, that's huge and can change the ball game. So two down now, and here is Gabrielle Moreno. First offering, and it just misses. And the right hander deals. That one fouled off. Ball tied up, and we're at the top half of the sixth. Next offering is downstairs. A little out front there as he swings through it. And he really sells the changeup with that arm action. Two down, nobody on. Caught him looking for the K. Impeccable command in that one. Three batters, three strikeouts. That's electric stuff out there on the mound. Back here at Fenway, and here is Connor Wong. And the pitch. Rip to short, snagged on a bounce. Fires to first, one up, one down. Center fielder, number 16, Duran. So the Red Sox lineup turns over. Jaron Duran, the next to hit. Trying to bunt his way on. Not in time, he legs it out. It doesn't surprise anyone when he gets on base by dropping down a bunt. I mean, this is just the latest example of him using his speed to his advantage and showing off his skills with the bat. That was very nice. Devers now. First pitch doesn't find the zone. I love this part of the game. Does he really want to try and steal second against this catcher? I know he's fast, but it's pretty risky. The 1 0. Fastball for a strike. He's trying to stay away from this lefty, knowing that a lot of left handers like the ball down and in. Gallon checks on the runner. Duran dives back in safely. With the go ahead run at first, here in the bottom of the sixth. And a count one and two. With two strikes, may see some movement over there at first base, trying to stay out of the double play right here. Swing and a miss struck him out. 
Nice job behind the plate there. You hear people talk about letting the ball travel so often in terms of a hitting approach, and that's a great example why right there. If he's willing to let that curveball get a little deeper into the zone before he commits, he's way more likely to recognize that it's making a beeline for the dirt. On the other side, still a nice two-strike pitch, though. And now the first baseman, Tristan Casas. And a pitch out, but nothing going on. Next offering is in for a strike. This game has been so tight, feels like the next team to score will win it. Left-hand batter waits. And another ball. Duran off of first with two away. Swing and a miss. Two and two now. Two outs. Spoils that one and it remains two and two. Smoked on the ground a second. Fires over to first. And that's the third out. One left for the Red Sox. Score remains tied 1-1. Top of inning number seven. And now, Eugenio Suarez. And a pitch. Back to the mound. It hit him. On the run, throw to first. And a quick out number one. And now they'll hustle out to check on him. That was quite a shot he took as you see him down on a knee. Yeah, clearly in some real pain, but he will not want to come out of this game if he doesn't have to. It's looking to me like he's going to try to shake it off and continue. Alec Thomas stands in now for the Diamondbacks. And that's in there at the knees for a strike. Trying to keep good speed off the bases. Lifted in the air right center field. Duran makes the catch for the out. And that quickly, two away. And it's Lourdes Goriel Jr. In there for strike one. Two down, nobody on. Here the top half of inning number seven. Swung on, belted. Back there. Hits the top of the wall. In with the double, and the go-ahead runs at second with two out. Seems like he got exactly what he was looking for right there. Put a really beautiful swing on that pitch right there. Just didn't quite have the combination of launch angle and exit velocity to drive it over the wall, but... When you can beat a center fielder like that, you know you hit it well. A chance now to take the lead, and at this point in the game, that could be a deciding run. Geraldo Perdomo stands in now for the Diamondbacks. One for two. That one missed. Two down. Go ahead, run and score in position. Next offering is in for a strike. That's hard hit in the line. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And that's the third out. One left for the Diamondbacks. Score remains deadlocked at one. Back 
here in Boston ready to go for the last half of the inning and now the DH Masataka Yoshida the wind of the pitch liner caught it second nothing you can do about those as a hitter even though you know that they still drive you absolutely crazy here's Trevor Story now he's already homered in this game close but called a ball one and oh that one called just inside I think and on the mound He's trying to get a little bit of an explanation. Doesn't seem to be too bothered by it, though, but he clearly thought it clipped the corner. Swing and a foul over the screen and back out of play. Pretty good pitch to take a pass at in a 1-0 count. Just not able to square it up. The 1-1 is fouled off. One down, base is empty. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. Two down. Well, that high four-seam fastball has become such a staple as a strikeout pitch over the years. And what's so tough as a hitter is that you see it extremely well. The problem is the velocity and spin rate just happens to jump by you. You expand your zone. You don't stay tall on the backside, and you're really not even able to make contact. If you do, many times it's a pop-up. Abreu, the next to hit, takes ball one. And another ball. Definitely a frustrating day for the offense, but when they look at it, this guy's had his best stuff. He's painting the corners, working on the edges, and changing speeds. Just a difficult one. You tip your cap. That's in there, and that is strike one. In today's game, not that many fastball counts, but hitters still in the back of their minds, they're looking for one. 2 0 changeup call right there. Excellent pitch selection to go with. Up the middle, and he knocks it down. Not in time. Great effort there, but now the go-ahead run is on at first. No problem beating out the infield hit right there. Good hustle getting down the line. And now let's see if they force some action with good wheels on the bases. So two down, Tyler O'Neill up next for the Red Sox. And the first pitch misses for ball one. If you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get into scoring position. Two gone. The possible go-ahead run at first. Next offering is in for a strike. Gallon checks on the runner. Abreu back on a dive. Left field, way back there. See you later. Tyler O'Neill sends it out. It's 3-1. He absolutely crushed that one. No doubt about that one, Boog. We knew it wasn't coming back. That's exactly the pitch he was looking for. Crushes it and hits it out of the ballpark. Two outs, nobody on. Vaughn Grissom up next for the Red Sox. Just missed. That to right. Thomas makes the play, and that is that. But two come across to score in the inning, courtesy of this two-run homer. And this is now a three-one ball game. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Welcome back, and a new arm on the mound to start the eighth. Chris Martin. These are the spots relievers really make a name for themselves, late and close. 
There's not much margin for error, but at the same time, there's a reason they're put in these situations. So the lineup flips over. This is Corbin Carroll. The pitch. That's a strike. 0-1. Action in the pen down there. Kenley Jansen appears to be getting loose. And the righty deals. Well, this guy's so comfortable hitting with two strikes, even a good pitch early in the at-bat. If he's not ready to pull the trigger, he's not worried if he gets to an 0-2 count. Wouldn't chase that time. It's good speed at the top of the order here. You want to get it on, see if you can get a stolen base, maybe get around the bases and pick up a run. That's a little bit low. On the ground to Devers. In plenty of time to first. First out in the top of the eighth. Cattel Marte up to the plate. There's a strike. Martin, a righty that throws with power. He features a four-seam fastball, a cutter, a splitter, a sinker, and he works in a slider. Kicks and deals. Right side. Fires to first on the run. Two up, two down here in the top of the eighth. Couple of pitches and a quick out. The first baseman, Two outs, space is empty. And here's the first baseman, Christian Walker. Right through there for a strike. Strike two. Looking very settled on the mound here in the eighth. One more out, and they'll probably hand it off to their closer for the ninth with at least a two-run lead. At the belt and fires. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And a nice inning of work there as he sets him down. One, two, three. Diamondbacks down quickly. And they still trail it here. Three to one. Back now, new pitcher on the mound as we roll into the bottom of the eighth, Joe Mantiply. Just trying to keep this one close here, and this is where a bullpen can give their players a chance to fight back into the game. And now it's the catcher for the Red Sox, Connor Wong. The catcher. And a pitch. That's in for a strike. You know, these Red Sox, simply put, are producing a lot of quality swings. We've already seen eight line drives from them, and it's always a good sign when the ball is jumping off your bat. And that's what this offense has been doing so far today. So the batting order turns over, and now the center fielder, Jaron Duran, one for three. Activity in the Arizona bullpen. Number 27 up and throwing for manager Tori Lovello. Bases empty one away here the bottom half of the eighth inning. Strike one. One down base is empty. And a base hit right there. The 
Nice job of driving that pitch the other way on a line. You know, hitters, they take so many reps in the cages working on going to the opposite field, and it doesn't always translate into the game, but right there it did, and he did it perfectly. And it's Rafael Devers in the box. Next offering in there for a strike. And the count is 0 and 2. And he deals. That one missing inside. He might want to steal second in this spot, but he's dealing with a catcher that has one of the best pop times in the game. He needs to pick his spot very wisely. Got him. And he's gone for the fourth time tonight. Well, big power guy right there and generating so much bat speed. It's hard to bring that to a halt once you've committed. They try to check the swing, just couldn't do it. Casas stands in now and watches strike one. Well, if he's going to steal second, you want him to go early in the count. That way he's not a distraction to the hitter at the plate. Go ahead and get it out of the way so the hitter can focus on the pitch. Duran, the runner at first with two gone. Next one misses, and the count's even at two. Really good take, especially with two strikes. And there's a rocket into the outfield. Duran, round second on his way to third. Coming home. The relay, he's safe. Well done, drives in the run. A well-deserved double on a great swing. Got everything going on time. He stayed balanced and he squared it up about as well as you could possibly ask. Next is the designated hitter, Masataka Yoshida. Pitch misses inside, and it's 1-0. And another ball. Two outs and one in scoring position. Right through there for a strike. That one ripped. And that gets down into the gap. Runner from second scores as they add on. It's 5-1. And that's a two-out double. Comes through with the RBI. You see a ball come off the bat like that, you know it was pretty much a perfect swing. And for me, you know, I start wondering, and I'm looking on the computer, what was the exit velocity? This time, 106. Now on the bump, Ryan Thompson. And we all know about his slider. It's just filthy, man. And one of the better ones in the game, I'd say. Spin rate's very high, and it just breaks a ton. Man at second here with two away. And stepping in for Boston, Trevor Story. He's already homered here in this one. Swing and a miss. Slider right there. Man on second, two down. The shortstop takes a ball. Ball to strike. Foul ball. 
Rudder at second, two down. And he hits a ground ball right side. Marte throws the first in time. They limit the damage here. Two runs, three hits, no errors, and one left. Ninth inning coming up. It's the Red Sox five and the Diamondbacks one. We're back. It's the top of the ninth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, Greg Weiser. And he's got a nice lead to work with, so he should come in throwing strikes, attacking these hitters. Jock Peterson stands in now for the Diamondbacks. 0 for 3 with two strikeouts and a ground out. The pitch. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left handed hitter. And the 0 1. High fly ball out to left field. O'Neill drifts towards it. Hauls it in, and there's one away. He's two outs away. Now up next for Arizona, Gabriel Moreno. He is at the top of the game in terms of defense at the catching spot. Swing and a miss as he was out front. It's so impressive because these guys have to do so much study and preparation for their pitchers, for opposing hitters, and really their number one job is to guide that staff through a ball game. And so when you also can turn it up offensively and be a force there, that is a win-win every manager's dream. So they're down to their final out. Next up for the Diamondbacks, A. Eugenio Suarez. On the ground, right side. This looks like extra bases. And that rolls into the corner. Around first, heading for two. He's there. It's a two out double. Love how he let that ball travel, trusted his hands. Nice job of going the other way. And now the right fielder, Alec Thomas. And that one is in for a strike. Man at second. And that's outside. And that is ball one. Good eye in that spot. The Red Sox leading by four here at the top of the ninth. Line to right, and that'll be a base hit. Here's the throw to the plate. It's off the mark, and he scores. Everything came together for him at 110 miles per hour on the exit velo. That thing was screaming, and that's some serious bat speed to generate contact like that, and no doubt a higher launch angle sends that thing out of here easily. Kenley on here. He has a great slider with tons of movement. Here's Guriel. Drove it off the wall last time. Just missed out on a home run. Lifted to left, and that should do it. And that'll do it. Well, this is definitely a rarity, a one-pitch save. You come into the ball game, so much pressure, don't know what's going to happen, and fortunately, you make the pitch, you get the out, and everyone has a big sigh of relief. And your final score, 5-2. Kenley Jansen picking up the save.
For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Shambi. We'll see you soon.